My next guest is the fastest American woman in the history at 400 meters. Right there, you know that's something I can't do, male or female. I can never be the fastest. I cannot be the fastest talker, the fastest eater. I definitely could not be the fastest person on track. She is a Jamaican-American former track and field athlete who completed internat- who competed internationally for the United States. In addition to her track prowess, she is also an entrepreneur, TV personality, public speaker, and humanitarian. She's the founder of the Sonia Richards Ross Fast Track Program in Kingston, Jamaica, which has provided over 700 children with literacy training, physical education, physical education, and healthy meals. A key is a healthy meal. Her sports clinics we educate, empower, and provide youth with tools and strategies to excel both on and off the track. Please welcome to Money Making Conversations, my good friend. I'm calling my friend because she's doing things in life that I respect. Sonia Richards Ross. Oh, thank you so much, Rashawn. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. I've heard a bunch of the conversations you've had and also followed you, so thanks for having me. Well, first of all, where are you at right now? What part of the country, the world, the state? Where are you at? So we can just landmark that first. So I'm in Austin, Texas. This is where I live. I've been here since I came to the University of Texas for college. Mm -hmm. So I am home in Austin, Texas. Now you, but you do your, your, but your foundation, your clinic is in Kingston, Jamaica, correct? That's right. Okay. It, do you do you do you do the same thing in Austin, Texas, where you're home, or you just feel there's a need for it in in Jamaica? Well, no. So my husband and I do clinics. We've done clinics all over the country, mm-hmm. but the main clinic that I started in, I guess that was 2009, mm-hmm. in Kingston, Jamaica. I'm from Jamaica, uh, like right. you mentioned at the top of the show. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that really pulled at my heartstrings was when I was traveling a lot and I would compete in Jamaica every year. I started to hear that illiteracy was rising in my country, and one of the things that I always was so proud of was the education I received in Jamaica, and so. Um, as you can imagine, money goes a lot further in a third world country like Jamaica. And so mm-hmm. I just put some money and I got a bunch of other friends to help me and some other great organizations to support us. And we were able to start a really significant program there. So um, the one in Jamaica was the biggest one. And then we've done, my husband does football camps in Tyler, Texas, San Antonio. I've done a camp in Florida. Um, but the one that I had the most staying power and the most longevity was our, our camp in, in Kingston, Jamaica. Great. I was just in Jamaica, re- vacation. <clears throat> I was at the Half Moon Resort, you know, some one of my favorite yes. places to stay, you know. Nice. Got me some good food. You know what I'm saying? Some good, yes, food, yes. Some ba- good ba- jerk ba- pork, you know, some <laughs> beef patties, you know, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had a good time, so I just got back. So it was really great talking about it. Here's my number one question to you. When does an athlete stop being an athlete? Ooh, that is a really good question. You know, you get interviewed all the time and you're always like, ah, it's going to be the same old question. No one has ever asked me that. (laughs) And, um, you know, I think the answer to that, Rashad, is you never do. You never do. I think that being an athlete is so much more than just running on a track or dunking a basketball. I think it's a lifestyle. And um, and so I I feel like I'm still an athlete today, you know, whether it's being a mom or an entrepreneur or some of the other things that I do. I have carried so many of the lessons and experiences that I've learned from sports. And so I still feel like an athlete right now. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, the things I always admired about track athletes, the, the fast track athletes, which those abs, you know, oh, my God. The, <laughs> the, 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 the six packs, the 14 packs, the 30 packs. Because is it because of the lifting those knees, those legs, and at that <laughs> rapid rate, you kind of like doing those, those stomach crunches and everything when you're flying around that track because – you know, y'all just be showboat with the with the abs. Yeah. It's just just ridiculous. Well, you know, it's 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 a little bit of both, Rashawn. Like, of course, running every day and the movements that we do. But I actually did a thousand sit ups every day, five days a week for the majority of my career. Um, so those abs were not only, I guess, beautiful, but they were very functional um, because the four hundred, uh, like you mentioned, that was my expertise. I'm the American record holder. Painful. Four hundred. Painful. <laughs> Painful. Exactly. And in order to run the final hundred well you really need to have a strong core so i did a lot of training to to get those six pack abs i i miss them <laughs> i want them back okay wait 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 wait. you just said that athletes is never stop okay you're talking about you, you slip in there <laughs> See, you let people talk yes. they tell you what they hit right there at the but banana loves banana splits and everything a thousand you did a thousand crunches yes. or what, what, was it the leg raises or you know, tell because well, well, some people cheat when they say a thousand sit-ups. Well, would you put the the, the the lock fingers behind the head, 
sit up? What type of sit ups were you doing? I was doing all kinds of, uh, we call it, we would say, I would do six core exercises. I would do the traditional core. We would do weighted core. Oh, yeah. We would do planking, time, oh, timed core, oh, med ball core, physio oh. ball core, all oh. kinds of different core exercises, focusing on the front core and also the back. A lot of people forget that your back is a part of your core and yes. a part of your stability. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I do a lot of core training on my back as well. Well, you know, it's really interesting when I, when I look at athletes who are as accomplished as you. You know, because of the fact that, you know, there are, you, you can look at different things and become seasonal. It, it, is there such a thing as a seasonal period for a track athlete? No, I mean, I feel like if, uh, we don't train, train year-round. When I was training competitively, I would take four to six weeks off every year. But mm-hmm. even in that time, even though, yes, I wasn't running or in the gym, I, I was still operating like a high-level athlete. So I was still trying to eat well and resting well and still taking care of my body. So I don't think there's anything... As a seasonal professional athlete, I think that um, if you're going to be profes- a professional athlete, it's a, a you know it's a year-round commitment, uh, and you're always thinking about trying to get the best out of your body, even in the off season. Well, you know, because of the fact that you know when I think about just trying to be in shape, and I'm going to tell you something: I'm the worst person. You hang out with me, um, you really be going, Rashawn, ridiculous the way you eat. <laughs> you know, because I, I fool people. You know, I look like I'm in shape, and then they go. Really? Yes, you do. Really, really you eat desserts <laughs> before you eat your meal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so stop looking at me like I'm crazy because that's going to happen all the time. And so, do you do you train people or do you do you do people? Because people come to you, I'm sure. You know, because I've looked at your resume. But what do, what do you do when people ask for training advice or or just look at you? And they say, "Well, oh, you know, I'm from Jamaica. You know, it's just God given. You know, I I just uh, I I do my thousand sit ups. I've got fast feet. This is my life." What yeah, do you well, do? Because I mean, people I'm, just assume that you just were giving it, you know, and that's that's an insult yeah. to what you have achieved as an athlete, correct? Oh, yeah. I mean, the God-given talent is just the basis um, and the foundation that you have to build on if you want to be a great athlete. And so I was definitely born and gifted with uh, with speed. Yes, but, ma'am. That, I mean, so many hours of work and commitment to be able to be the best in the world. And you also asked if I coach other athletes and stuff, and, you know, I'm so grateful for the amazing coaches I've had throughout my entire career, but right. I am not cut out to be a coach. I know. Well, so, Don't feel bad. You know, Don't feel bad. You yeah, know. but but one of the things I do love and I'm really passionate about is mentoring young athletes. And so mm-hmm. whenever athletes reach out to me or any athlete that's kind of been in my sphere, uh, whether here in Austin, the UT athletes or some of the young professionals, I'm always excited about helping to mentor them, to guide them through that transition from the collegiate ranks into the professional ranks. So, I don't coach athletes, and if athletes, young athletes, reach out to me on social media or DM me, I always try to send them back with encouragement or something that I feel I can share that might help them get over the hump. But as far as coaching, I don't think that's something. I, I never say never, but it's Absolutely. not something that is in my near future. <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, the thing about it, we're in the, we're in the era of, uh, you know, social media posts, and yeah. a lot of times body shaming takes over. When, uh, yeah. Especially when you're, 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 you're a world-class athlete, you know, and uh, you had a child. Oh, you have a child, excuse me, I apologize yeah. for saying that. No, and that's so, okay. Because you had to make a decision, you know, about that, you know, because mm-hmm. could I come back? You know, am I risking my future? What, 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 mm-hmm. what went into your mindset as a world-class athlete and the expectation or the planning process of becoming a mom? It's a great question. So, um, you know, ultimately I decided that I wanted my career to be over before I had a child. Um, Because I think that, and I've said this before, being an athlete is one of the most selfish things that you can do. You're constantly thinking about yourself. You have to always put your needs first. And becoming a mom and being a mother is the complete opposite of that. You have to be so unselfish, and it's all about putting someone else first. And so I actually retired from the sport before I had my son. I retired in 2016, and then my husband and I actively tried to have a child, and I had my son in 2017. So for me, it was always, you know, my desire was to finish my career, Mm -hmm. um, get all of my goals accomplished first, and then transition into being a mom, which has been just the best, best, best role. And, you know, my greatest accomplishment by far, you know, Mm -hmm. is is my little boy. That's amazing. Uh, We're we're speaking to the amazing uh, Sonia Richards-Ross. She's the fastest American woman in the 400 meters. And I'm going to just tell you, that's one time around the track, correct? Yes, that's one lap around. Okay, just right there, you know, because you know, just just trying to get around that track, because you have the you know, the one hundred, you know, that's a sprint, 
the 200, mm-hmm. you man up for that. When you go that 400, <laughs> that's 200 twice. So let's be, just get yeah. people bad with math. You know what I mean? That means that 200 <laughs> twice, but maintaining the speed through yes. 200 twice. That's a that's a gut wrench. We are we have more. We're gonna to talk to her more about Mommy Nation, three books. Uh it's amazing when I talk to individuals like her that are so natural about how they how life brings them success and then they're willing to share it and admit that, you know, that's something I wouldn't do. That's just not me. I'm not a coach. Well guess what? I'm not a coach either and I'm not a track star. But what I can do is talk. And I have a great guest on the show. We'll be right back with more money making conversations. Hi, this is Rashawn McDonald, and you're listening to Money Making Conversations. Money Making Conversations is your show. That's right, I'm pointing, but I know no one can see me pointing, but I got a point to emphasize my point, that uh, this show can make a difference in your life if you just listen and you have an open mind about how you are trying, uh, dealing with the different journeys that come before you when you're trying, uh, or different paths, I should say. That's what I'm trying to get, the different paths that you need to overcome or to accomplish to be successful. She is a Jamaican-American former track and field athlete. She's a mom. She waited till after she accomplished everything she felt in the track field and said, hey, it's time. I'm going to do some another great accomplishment in my life. She lives in Austin and um, doing her thing. And she uh, she's written three books. But I want to talk before we get to the three books. Um, tell me about uh, Mommy Nation. Of course. So Mommy Nation is a blog platform and community focused on supporting African-American moms navigate through motherhood with more confidence. So we write incredibly honest, raw, and real blogs about our experiences as mothers, wives, entrepreneurs, just the experiences that we're having. And it has been incredible. One of the things I think you asked me in the top of the show was you asked if I ever stopped being an athlete. And this is one way I feel like I haven't. I think what one of the things that made me a great athlete was the incredible support system I had. I had a phenomenal coach and great sports psychologists and agents and managers. And so when I became a mom, although, of course, you're bringing another human into the world and you have this companion, Mm -hmm. it does sometimes feel like you're alone with your experiences. And so I wanted to create a space where we could be in community, feel supported. And every day when I read the blog or someone reaches out to me and says, man, you don't know how much this has helped me. I feel like I'm kind of still serving that purpose of being in community and supporting other people. So it's just been amazing. Well, it's really important. I have six sisters. So I that so means I have oh, a wow. lot of nieces and nephews. And a lot of people don't understand um, the, the importance of a relationship in, uh, in motherhood. Uh, can you oh, expand yeah. on that a little bit? Because you, know, you, you just automatically assume, because first of all, having a child changes your life. There's a responsibility that only you yes. can understand. As a, as a man, I can respect it, but I, it's, it's, you, you carry the child for a maximum of nine months. Some child, children yeah. do are delivered earlier. And so that means that yeah. there's a that's a worry, you know. I know my wife, yes. you, know, you know, when she carried our child, you know, it's, it's certain things after when she said she prayed every day, you know, she was yeah. worried, worried. That's, that's, a, that's, that, that's a lot to carry. And so yeah. I can understand why you're doing Mommy Nation. Can you expound on that a little bit? Absolutely. Like you said, becoming a mom changes your life. Um, you feel like things that were important before are no longer important. You talk about your wife praying for your kids all the time. There's just so much that happens in your life when you become a mom. And the truth is, obviously, God willing, you have your own mom who might still be able to guide you. In my case, my sister had also become a mom. But the truth is, is that many of us are having so many different experiences that my sister and I could be new moms together and our experiences are still so different. And so Mm -hmm. with Mommy Nation, what I love the most is that we have moms from all over. We have moms who are single moms, working moms, moms of six. I have, um, you know, divorced moms, newly married moms. We have fitness moms, fashion moms, just moms who have all different kinds of interests, who live all over the country. And when we can, we're connected based on the fact that we're mothers who love kids and want to see our kids thrive. So it's just incredible to see everything that has come out of our community so far and all the things that we're excited about possibly doing in the future and, and just being connected. We had our first event in Atlanta last week, and it was about 10 of us that were able to come to this event. And I tell you, we just had the best time laughing and talking about our experiences and sharing with each other. And it just makes you feel like, you know, okay, this is normal. I can get through this. Wow, that's beautiful. Uh, I'm going to tell you, first of all, I'm very impressed with you. 
just your, oh, your articulation, you. <laughs> your your range of thought. Uh, uh, thank you. Does, does, uh, are there plans for TV uh, expanding your participation in in front of the camera? Yeah. It just it just seems oh, like a, well. a natural lane for you, and I gotta <laughs> ask that because you know I've, I've seen enough talent in front of a camera to know that that's a skill that you can be that you can do very well. Can you expound on that opportunity? Those opportunities for us. Yes, yes, Rashawn. Thanks for asking. So I currently do sports broadcasting for NBC, so I call all the major track and field meets for NBC. But I'm so excited that I'm working on a new project with Debmar Mercury and Will Packer. It's going to be an entertainment news show that we will be filming in Atlanta and will air November 4th. We have a five-week test. Uh, it's going to be on Fox, so God willing, that goes well. I'm co-hosting it with Julissa Bermudez, and if it goes well, we'll have our own show in 2020, and I'll be on TV every day. Woo-hoo. See, you probably be calling it. I'll be calling it, man. Come on now. <laughs> yes. I'm going to tell you what really excites me about that conversation is that it's, it's beyond track and field. Because yes, track and field, absolutely. you know, it, you know, it, 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 it's it's don't take anything I'm saying negative, but it can limit your exposure because people say, all you can do is just call track and field. Well, you know, right. and, and, and so it's not the big ratings grabber for television. You know, I like basketball and I like football and soccer. Right. So you can like be so talented as I see and hear that you are that to, to see you getting this opportunity. Now, when are you coming into Atlanta? So, you know, this is where I'm based in Atlanta. I'd love to, yes. you know, to hang out with you, go and talk and just talk about your career. You know, I'm always looking for new talent and everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. No, so I'll, so I'll be there um, in October. So we start filming November 4th. Our producers want us to be there at least two weeks before we start okay. filming. So I guess okay. that's like late October. Okay. So I would love to connect with you. That would be, that'd be a real Absolutely. Treat Absolutely. Because I'm just hearing it. I'm, I'm hearing uh, star potential in your voice and the fact that you... Thank you. I'm going to tell you, this, this is what I always tell people, that uh, a lot of people want to do television. A lot of people want to, but... Yeah, it's what life that you are have lived or are currently living because you, you yeah. know, you you know, you're, you're a mom, you know, and we all know as an athlete, or, and I have to say it whether it's professional or a highly trained Olympic athlete, there's a certain amount of discipline that you got to have for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, on the down days you still got to be up, on the up days you got to be yeah. up her, and then the fact yeah, that you're true. giving back, you're giving back, you haven't forgotten where you came from, and you still want to contribute, and then the fact that mommy nation, so that gives you like a 360 conversation base. You're not tied to just Thank you. being a track star. And that's really important. I forgot also your wife. And so that experience of going back yes. and forth <laughs> and sharing conversation and sharing responsibility always pops up to make you a well-rounded person and, and, and diverse in your conversation. So all know that this, whenever you talk about who you are, know that when you come across very natural as I'm hearing it is because you can speak on so many, so many different levels. And plus you're educated. You're educated. And that's all important in all this. So I, I wish you tremendous success, and, if, and I will be Thank shocked you. if you are not successful in that production. We definitely i will get with my staff so we can connect. I know I've talked so much. I just got off on this transit. I just heard this wonderful star <laughs> communicating no, and I found out she's about so to shoot much. a pilot. You made my day, you know, made my you know, day. I'm hearing all this greatness <laughs> on the fog. You know, we were from track to go, girl, who managing you? <laughs> 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 so let's talk about, uh, I like, got li- li- limited time, but I want to talk about three books yeah. that I want to bring you back on the show to discuss yeah. in detail because I want to read them because you've written three books. And the first yes. one, why did you write the books? Well, I always wanted to write a book. Um, and initially I thought I was going to just write one book. And the book that was on my heart was to write a book for young girls. I wanted to write something that would inspire and encourage young girls to reach for their dreams uh, based on my own stories and my uh, the ups and downs throughout my career. And as I was presented with the book opportunity, they said, hey, you know, we'd love for you to write a memoir. I said, hey, I feel like I'm too young to write a memoir. Um, but then as, as, as we kind of talked through what that would look like, I felt, wow, like I'm, I'm just closing this very important chapter in my life. I had just retired from, the tr- from track and field, and mm-hmm. I don't have the best memory in the world. Thank God I journaled. <laughs> but I thought, okay, you know, it would be a really good time to talk about what this time in my life has been like and mm-hmm. everything that I've learned and how I feel like other people can stand on top of po- their own podiums in their own life. And mm-hmm. so I ended up writing an adult book, Chasing Grace is my adult book. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very transparent, very honest. I share some really low times in my life and some really yes. awesome, incredible highs in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and ultimately about my faith, how my faith kind of carried me through it all. And and then my other two books are. Let's talk about the virgin. importance of. Let's talk about the importance of your faith. You know, yes. uh, it, it's really interesting. Uh, this is a show about money making conversations, uh, uh, entrepreneurship, entertainment, and faith pops up a lot. 
and uh, and it, it it becomes a a motivator for a lot of people who call on the show. I would say the majority of the people come on this show. Then you just you mentioned faith. Explain the importance yeah. of faith in not only what you did as a track star, but what you're trying to accomplish in the future. I mean, my faith has meant everything to me, and I think that my faith has been the reason that I've been able to be resilient through sports and through everything else in my life because I ultimately believe that everything is working together for my greater good um, and that I serve an awesome God who, as long as I honor him and lean into him, will always take care of me and take care of my family and will lead me in the right direction. And so in my book, Chasing Grace, without giving away too much, I ultimately talk about all my life. I feel like I'm chasing, I'm chasing records, I'm chasing medals and chasing all these things. But the greatest gift that I've, I was able to run into as I was running all around the world was God's grace. Um, and so in everything that I do, I just always know that if doors close, they weren't meant for me. And doors that are opening, God God is working behind the scenes to open them for me. And I just try to show up in the world um, with a lot of positivity and love um, and just try to be the best person that I can be because I know that that's what honors God. Okay, now, Mommy Nation, okay. before we get off the air, Mommy Nation, how can uh, individuals connect with that? So the first thing is I would love for them to check out the actual blog. So it's Mommy with an I, not a Y mommynation.com where we have over 300 blogs on pregnancy on life after marriage after divorce just every we're trying to cover the full breadth of what motherhood um, and being a mom and being a woman and a wife looks like so you can connect with us there we're also on instagram and facebook um, but i also would love to invite any mom who either blogs doesn't blog if they ever want to contribute to our platform, we're always looking for new moms to write blogs and to share their stories to encourage other moms. So, But, of course, the main place to check us out is mommynation.com. We'll talk soon. Good luck. I would, so I would say keep running, but, you know, you're not running anymore. So keep, <laughs> keep, keep being a mom. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank Stay you awesome. so much. What a treat to, to connect with you and... I definitely, definitely would love to connect with you when we're in Atlanta. So we'll make sure that happens. We'll make sure that happens. Good luck. We talk soon.